Today we are going to talk about host of wedges. So let's begin by describing the differences in physical, dynamic, and universal wedges. Define what the isodose or the wedge angle is. Define wedge transmission factor. And what are the effects of a physical wedge? So a physical wedge, first of all, is essentially an absorber that decreases the intensity of the beam and results in the tilt of iso lines. Typically, this is made of lead or steel. And this is what you see in your treatment room. Typically, it just looks like a big metal or lead wedge that you manually put into the collimator of the machine. Next, we have a universal wedge. And so that is a physical wedge that is moved with a motor that is actually within the head of the machine. Typically that wedge, that physical wedge that is moved in and out is a 60 degree wedge. And those are also above the secondary jaws. So ultimately the different isodose lines are made by adjusting that wedge with different sizes of open field and closed fields, weighting them and causing that change in isodose line. And then our dynamic wedge is ultimately made by moving a collimator, you move the jaw across the field, and that is automated. And uh, the, the real advantages are that you have less peripheral dose than you do for physical wedges. And then for example, if you're doing a breast plan, you're going to have less contralateral breast dose than with a dynamic wedge compared to that of a physical wedge. Uh, however, the disadvantage is that there's increased complexity, increased complexity for the machine that something may go wrong. And then you also have a lot more uh, dosimetry and beam data to consider as well. So the uh, external wedge is about 50 cm from the ISO center. And, and those are kind of the differences between all those different wedges. So now what is a wedge angle? So the wedge angle is the angle through which a ISO curve is tilted at the central ray of a beam at a specified depth, typically to 10 cm. So uh, remember, the wedge angle is not the actual physical physical angle of the wedge. It is at a 10 cm depth, how much does it angle that isodose line? So if we have water, uh, typically we would have, if we have nothing, we just have a plain field, you're going to see an isodose line, something like this. I mean, I'm kind of, you know, making this up as I go, but that's an open field. You come down, it's a pretty flat field. That's kind of how it is. If you have the same water phantom, you may have isodose lines that come down and then they have this curve to them. So that, this curve, this angle right here, say that's 45, that's when your wedge angle is 45 and so it's not the actual physical angle of the wedge, rather how much of an angle that the ice dose lines make a curve in at that specified depth. So the wedge transmission factor. So wedges obviously will decrease the output of the machine because they are attenuating some of the beam. So that must be taken into account. So the wedge factor ultimately here is the dose without the wedge and that is divided by the dose with the wedge and the you want to put the chamber past d max uh, something like at uh, 10 cm so these factors are typically less than one because you are going to have a a number, you, you know, there's an attenuation. So you are going to have less dose than with that in compared to without. And then what are the effects of physical wedges? So you have beam hardening in the X-ray beam that can, 
actually alter percent depth doses in large depth. So you have the beam hardening and then you have the extra scatter dose that, for example, like in contralateral breast could matter. So small topic, be sure you know the differences though, especially elected machines use universal wedges, varying machines use physical and dynamic wedges. So understand the differences, what machines use what and what are the advantages of each one. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching and happy studying.